Bitches. Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie, Movie Bitches. Bitches. RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 5, Episode 3. <laughs> Woo. Well. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, it was. Uh, this was a weird one. This was a weird one. I don't know what else to say, you know? It was odd. I had a feeling of unrest throughout. Huh? The whole. Oh. Wait. Oh. Uh. Are we. What? They are officially gaslighting us. It's happening. I mean, I mean, I just. Uh, uh. I loved all four of our reactions when it was like, and the favorite sweet was. What? What? Oh. What? What? Well, if you if you watch earlier in the viewing party, after the twenty four karat gold sweet skit ended, I said, "Well, they're going to be in the bottom." For joining us on Shantae, well, they're going to be at the bottom. And remember, <laughs> I mean, yes, that's what I said too. Like, what? <laughs> we'll get there. We'll talk about it. But first things first, this week we are spotlighting the organization for the Gorls, spelled G W O R L S. It's an organization that provides rent and gender affirming surgery assistance to black transgender people. There's a link in the description. Every little bit helps. Donate your time, uh, sign a petition, donate money if you can. It's all going to a good cause. Second thing, second, big thank you to our Patreon supporters. $5 a month more gets you early access. $10 a month more gets you access to our viewing parties. They've been very silly and fun. I mean, obviously this one was a lot of yelling at the TV. Ross in particular. You know, all of that. So anyway. Anyway, third thing's third. Shout out to our wine sponsor, Wink. Go to trywink.com slash moviebitches. You get $22 off your first month of wine. Finally, please make sure to subscribe, share, ho. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. It's just at moviebitches. So everyone comes back into the workroom. Angina has gone home. Sad. Still yep. sad. Still sad about it. I know. This is not the ordering of events that I would have gone with. No. And, uh, you know, it was unanimous. They go through and show us all the lipsticks. One for Angina. Two for Angina. 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 I mean, I, we could have done a dragged out. It was like it was already done for us. It was just Angina. 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 For five minutes, I swear. They all walk in, and Shea Coulee is wearing this half black, half white jean jacket, and I was like, yes, please, I love it. And then she can't clean off the. She can't, she There's can't no do getting it. rid of Angina. Mm, sorry, girl. And um, Alexis's, you know, Babar visor crown into it. Oh, I mean. I'm really kind of disappointed that you guys had Say Something Hat Day today and didn't tell me about it. How yes. dare you not <laughs> tell me it was a say something hat day? Yes. Most oh, of my Juju. notes are, and then Juju said this, yep. and then Juju said that. Juju B, Juju B, <laughs> meow meow, Juju B. Meow meow. <laughs> <laughs> meow meow bitches. And then everyone's sitting around the table, you know, chitty chatting before the room message comes on, and uh, there's a. Mayhem and Alexis are very uh, mad. Girl, I don't believe not none of this. I'm just gonna be real. All I can do is apologize and say that I was wrong. She's not here any longer, and now you're gonna say you apologize? But anyway, the drama continues, uh, and we'll get to it a bit. Sure. Uh, but Rue comes out to tell them that the, no mini challenge, uh, that the right. maxi challenge <laughs> is, is um, Shantae, you... Your hotel stay? What was it called? Yeah, Shantae. Shantae, enjoy your stay. Yeah. Okay. So can we just, we have to, we have to talk about it. This is the most nonsense challenge I think I've ever heard of. Ah! Pretty much. The Sex in the City challenge was more convoluted. Oh. I don't know if we're ever going to reach that level of insanity. But this was weird to me where it's just like, what drag queen ever has to be an interior designer? That's its own profession. I don't know what the criteria was. Like, by the end of the episode, I was like, what did you want from them? Because I don't know. I don't know what I it is. no idea. Was it who has the best room? I mean, in my opinion, that was they got it wrong. Was it be spontaneously funny in a... 
Property Brothers-esque? I don't really watch a lot of those shows. That wasn't this. Well, it and wasn't... And also, what yeah. does that have to do with drag queens? Well, like, literally nothing. If it had been, let's parody one of these shows. You'll be sure. the host. And that's the character right. you're playing. You'll be the nervous couple that's wanting to change all the bathroom fixtures. And you'll be right. the, you know, if it was that, at least it's like, oh, it's an acting challenge and we decided for reasons that escape me because we needed to use more of the object's furniture to do this challenge. That's, that's a thing. But this was, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. So they have to, this is what was really confusing. Okay, so Rue comes out and they, she says, you have to make a Rutique hotel Right. Five star Here. experience. I don't, any, all of them failed at that, by the way. Is it a fake five star experience? Is it like jokey? Five, ha, ha, five, ha, five ha. like rhinestone experience or like, you know, something like sequins. that would have been more clever. A five sequins. Five sequin ex yeah. sequins. Now that's fun. Yeah. That's funny. That's fun. That wasn't yeah. this. Well, okay. So like, obviously they were like, oh, everyone really loved the club challenge from last season. So let's redo that. But what I don't understand is why didn't they just redo that? Yeah. And also, why not bring out like an expert, right? Why not bring out like an interior designer then? That's or who that someone Martin Lawrence Boulevard Boulard person was. Oh. Design superstar Martin Lawrence Boulard. That's why all of his critiques, which I was into by the way, I liked him, were like, oh, your room. He was like always critiquing the room because he was an interior designer. Now it didn't make sense to me. Later we find out that they did a walkthrough and he was there, right. didn't see any of it. We had to no. spend more time on the cracker drama. Why? Why? Don't care? Maybe if we'd seen Rue and him walk through, we would have understood the challenge. Maybe. Now, wouldn't this have been fun? So, because drag queens do spend a lot of time in hotel rooms, right? So how do you dragify this hotel room or, oh. or, or something like that, you know, how do you turn this motel into a five-star boutique hotel? Something where it's transformative? Sure. I don't know. Yeah. I like that. Very Chu Wong Fu. Yeah. Oh, and then we threw the scarf at the wall and it stuck, you know. And magically everything is, yeah. <laughs> like dragify this at least is a, I love that. Is a thing. Take yes. the bones of yes. this instead of I don't know. We have to move on, but I, I, we're not going to get to the bottom of it. I would actually prefer to see like an actual workshop where it's like maybe they have three different designers and each one gets paired with a designer and it's like, okay, well, let's sit down and give me your inspiration. Here's how we can turn that idea into, you know, how we can turn, we can dragify this Motel 6 room into something fabulous or whatever. Here's three giant suitcases full of draggy shit. Yeah. Drag over this room. Love it. Woo! Anyway. But anyway, they randomly select teams based on who was already standing next to each other. <laughs> what? <laughs> Girl, no way. Huh? <laughs> How did that happen? We were already standing next to each other. Oh my God. Oh, and it was weird because Juju and Alexis and India were the team last week. So it seemed weird. Like they were the girl group. That was their girl group last week. The three of them. I don't them. remember last week. You know, I, I take Ginkgo Bilobo for my memory, but then I forgot to take it. So it's a catch-21, I suppose. 22. The girl grew up. I'm in love, I'm in love. Oh, right. Oh, right. Like, that was right. literally their group. So I was just like, That's right. that seems weird. Yeah. Who picked those? It was random, Andrew. It was totally random. Completely. <laughs> Pick out of a hat. A say something hat. Oh my gosh. So then they're oh. all sitting around. Why didn't you guys tell me? Oh my God. <laughs> this is when we find out that I had, didn't realize this. Juju had never won a challenge. I didn't realize that either. What about Juju B? Oh my God. What about Crazy. Juju? What about Juju? I just love Juju B so much. I mean, sorry. Yeah. Sorry for everyone that thinks we're biased. You're watching a show about our opinions, so. <laughs> and my opinion is that I love Jujubee. <laughs> when she was like, ooh, girl, I don't know. I'm on a team with two girls that have questionable taste. And I was like, that is accurate. And then she's like, but I shouldn't be saying anything because I also have questionable taste. And I was like, sometimes you do. I love you. Yes, <laughs> a self-aware queen. Let's be real. My taste is questionable too. I shouldn't be here talking shit about my teammates. Uh. 
So quick commercial break and we'll be back with the Shantae enjoy your stay <laughs> preparation transformations. I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Says Shay, your away suitcase sponsored this episode. Oh, that would have made more sense anyway. I would, I, uh, There's three away suitcases full of drag stuff. Dragify this hotel room sponsored by away. <gasps> I love that. Right? Ooh. So everyone gets a cubicle uh, that they have to paint. Uh, oh, this Pepto-Bismol pink. Oof. Our challenge this week is to create a five-star experience. We're going to recreate an ugly room that's fun and nostalgic, but fugly. Oh, you thought this room was fugly? Would you want to stay in this hotel and give it five stars? Unironically. I thought it was kind of chic and like retro. They were all awful, let's be honest. Well, yeah, but at least the jungle one, the Glamazone, made sense in its own theme. I, I was mean, excited. I also did love Jujubee's original idea of Alaska with the fucking pipeline. Oh, the fracking. <laughs> oh, the fracking. No, no, not that. Oh. <laughs> Shh. At first when she started talking about it, I thought she meant Alaska the drag Alaska. queen. And I was like, yeah. yes, the wallpaper just says anus everywhere. Love it. Yeah, no. no. No, she went like wild Alaska. Yeah. Like, of course, they're not going to create actual five-star whatevers. I just no. thought... Given the prompt, it was odd that they went Golden Girls for me. It was just odd. Right, because I guess Golden Girls never is going to shout five-star anything. Unless it's five fabulous women. It's only four fabulous women. So anyway. So anyway, yeah. To answer your question, I think that the five-star prompt was stupid. And basically everyone left it to the side. Because how are they supposed to do that with the shit budget and uh, stuff from objects? Like, that's just not going to happen. Well, and to me... I guess five star hotel is it's like slightly less about the physical hotel and more like the amenities, right? And so like right. And they tried to kind of do that ish, but it was unclear. Should it be a joke? Should it be real? What should be happening? Uh, you know, right? Because they were like, oh well, you know, we have a rotary telephone with you know local did, access. That made me laugh. Which was silly. We have a landline with free local calls, so you could remind your grandchildren. It's been a while since they've seen you. There were jokes written. They wrote jokes. They, were, they wrote jokes. When they said there weren't any jokes, I was like, that's not true. They just weren't funny. They just weren't very funny. But they had a script and they wrote them. And they weren't delivered particularly well. I do agree that like Shay's performance. She disappeared. Was, oh, and she was not B. Arthur. Where no. was the dry, like I wanted that to, to her to like toss out little shady quips and Well, that you know, was like, the oh. mistake. I mean, she should have just been Sophia, but that was the mistake. I think they went for something beloved. I didn't really care because I was like, this is stupid. But like, they went for something beloved and the judges decided, oh, you didn't do a perfect fucking interpretation of B. Arthur? We hate you. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They were, they were so specifically mad. I was like, okay, well, you know, this challenge they is really dumb were. and convoluted, so let's calm down. I think it maybe would have been smarter not to try and be the Golden Girls, but just to be like Golden Girls super fans. Well, it's also kind of like Austin Land is what I was thinking. <gasps> Talking about like a five-star experience that's themed, that would be really fun. Yes, agreed. Oh my God, I did love when they're all getting ready and Juju's like, oh, I have to shave my face. Do you guys need help shaving your backs? <laughs> More of this. Yeah, Absolutely. Also, it. more of the direct to camera. Second language, my ass. <laughs> Second language, my ass. Just, I love right. that she just directly to the camera. Oh boy, so she's just daggers out, coming for her. She's getting ready for her her glamazone. Yeah. <laughs> And she is going in for the kill. Listen, sweetheart, you're trying to make a Don't conflict with those men. I'm not sweethearting you. And Shay is just trying to keep it all. She's like, stay out of it. Don't ruin my teammate. You know, what? Bitch, who was talking to you? No one was even talking about you. You know, it was a lot of drama. 
It was a lot of drama. So, first up, the Golden Gals Palace. Everyone had golden, golden things. They were the golden gals. A lot gals. of golden things. The Glamazone had the golden shower, and then, of course, yeah. Midas's touch hotel room. Um... <laughs> I liked the aesthetics of this room. I thought they nailed, like, the kind of chic nostalgia factor. Yes. I think they did a good job designing it. Like, this isn't my go-to what I think of when I think of five stars. Certainly not. Oh, sure. But from a design perspective, did they take something and really create a space? And sure. all of that, was it aesthetically pleasing to what they were attempting? Yes. An assortment of girth and meats and cheeses. I love girth and meats. Girth I, and meats? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so mad. I thought Mariah was great. I'm pissed. Yeah, I mean, not the I winner, so. but you know. I thought she was honestly the best of that group. Reclaim rattan furniture, which is also real fancy for used wicker. I guess she didn't give me any Blanche more than... I certainly didn't get Rose. Well, we're and really, I didn't um, get Dorothy. Well, I think that was their mistake, that they tried to like do characters, like, like sacred yeah. characters. I think the way that they should have gone would be to just be like, this is the ultimate stay for the Golden Girls fan. Yes. And that's part of the five-star experience, is that you stay in this fabulous room that like, looks and feels like you're back on the set of Golden Girls. And, 100%. You know, we have all of these activities. Our concierge will line up, you know, all of the, whatever the fuck. I don't know. You can figure it out. I agree. Because it was, this, the angle was, in their minds, uh, amenities for older women. It was like, the beds are really soft. And like, it was like things that, you know what I mean? It was just like stuff for the golden girls to like. Unfair. Right. I didn't know. Yeah. Delicious piece of cream cheese pie. I was fairly convinced that they were going to put cracker in the bottom because she called it cream cheese pie. I, I thought they were just going to latch onto that and be like, bitch, it's cheesecake. Get out of here. It's cheesecake. Cream cheese pie. <laughs> I couldn't figure out if it was a joke or not. I think it wasn't. I don't think so. <laughs> Cream cheese, cream cheese pie, pie. Yes. Oh, I'm cheese sorry. Cake. Yeah, there you go. I mean, the fact that they didn't bring that up in the judging when they were so specifically like, you used a Sophia joke when you were playing B. Arthur. We hate you. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> you took it real. You took it there. Get there. You took it there. Okay. But so the next was the Glamazone. This really made me laugh. I had so much fun with this one. I had more fun than any of the other ones. I still didn't think I, I wasn't like, ah, this is the best thing that ever happened. No. It was, no. It was convoluted from... Sure. The, the challenge was convoluted from inception, so... Yes. But they at least had fun presenting it. Yes. They had fun making jokes and being silly and it was like, ooh, this is... I mean, they didn't take it seriously, I think, is maybe the better thing. Where it was just yeah. like... <laughs> my grandmother made this. Here I am sitting on a chair that my grandma made. My grandma also made this chair. Did your grandmother make oh, this boy. too? Oh, yes, girl. We're all wearing yeah. leopard print dresses. We're wearing leopard print dresses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rawr. You know, she was like, she's like making fun of how bad the challenge is while it's happening. And yes, she made yes. this. Oh, girl, she made this chair too. Yeah. <laughs> But then Nicole Byer comes out, and I was so excited because I love her. Yes. <laughs> She's riding that pit crew, remember? And there is a mosquito net to protect you from the live mosquitoes we've released. And then we release the mosquitoes? What was that? <laughs> the most exotic fruit we can find. What the hell Bananas. Just oranges. Oh, what the oh, hell was oh, that? What the hell? <laughs> great. It was great. Did you notice? That the bartender guy was wearing like a white speedo that then had a leopard print g-string on top of it. I didn't notice that, but that's funny. Maybe it didn't cover enough, so they had to put something oh, underneath. That's definitely it. what happened. I was just like, oh, no one had a leopard print speedo lying around. Come on. She was kind of giving me like um, luxury vibes. Luxury, slender. Acervescence. Obviously, they were the funniest, 
but I also thought that this was a good room and concept. Like, it was yeah. all fun and the safari theme and whatever else, you know, it was like, okay, that's a real thing. I could believe this. Yeah. I thought this was fun. I don't know why they just didn't win. <sighs> and then Juju wins. You know what I mean? Shenanigans. Last up, the 14 karat gold sweet? What was 24 it called? 24 karat gold. Tw oh, what? <laughs> It was the full, it was the full 24 <laughs> carats, not 14. <laughs> Although really, probably more like the 14 carats. I really didn't mean to do <laughs> The solid gold. Yeah. What was it called? 20, 24 carat gold experience or whatever the fuck. I don't know. 24 carat experience. Clearly I thought this one was so memorable and great. Do you want some carrots? You want a carrot? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some carrots? Oh my god, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> so their room is gold, and that's about all. And they talk about being rich, and they say the word yep. rich. Um, yep. And I mean, I didn't think this was like, you know, Nina and Tina level disastrous. Uh... Ah! But I thought it was, um, you know, boring and forgettable. Sorry. Yeah. It, this was the big thing for me. This is where I think the judging was the absolute so far off. Is because... The fact the that even with, Mayhem and Blair were shocked and surprised by their win. Did she say that for real? Yeah. Shut the fuck up. You would lie. But also, the whole concept of this room was so one note. The only joke was, rich. Don't you feel rich? Ooh. Like, that was it. Rich. How rich? Very rich. So rich. Daddy rich. 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 Expensive rich. 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 How rich? It was so basic. Gold. Oh, gold. Rich. I don't know. Yep. Also, it was so basic. Wasn't it so weird? I Like, it started off on the wrong foot for me because I was already like, this is bizarre. Hi, I'm Blair St. Clair, and I'm LeMay. What? Why didn't you both I was like, names? what? Why would one of you... Yeah. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Nope. And also, why not be... And I'm LeMayhem Miller. <gasps> LeMay. Love that. Yeah. Love that. And then Martin Lawrence Boulard and uh, Michelle come in. He was fun. The glamour mm. is almost unbearable. I will say, I think he really made it for them because he was down to clown. He was just like, because Michelle, you could tell she was like not feeling things. Rich. Oh, very. He gave them good energy back. Uh-huh, He was exactly. a good improv partner. He was. So quick commercial break and we will be right back with the runway. Category is three looks in one. Ish. Yeah, the math didn't really uh, add up on this one. <laughs> no. And I didn't go to school no. for math, but. <laughs> so Rue walks down the runway in this sherberty big bird boa feathered and I was like, yeah, I'm into it. I it was liked fine. It. it was fine. I didn't, I mean, it was the best we've had this yep. season. And she introduces the judges and Nicole Byers yeah. there. And this, uh, did this feel awkward? What do you think of my dress? How do you like my dress? Oh my God, I think you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I couldn't tell if Nicole Byer was jokingly like, it looks like you nailed it. <laughs> Or if she was like, if one more person asked me to fucking say nailed it one more goddamn time, I think it, I'm gonna flip this table. I couldn't tell which one I think it, was. it was. The latter. I think it was probably both. But like, yes, uh, she's obviously like never heard that one before. <laughs> it looks like you nailed it. <laughs> but also, I don't know how well she nailed it. So, but also, it's kind of weird because obviously the whole point of or did you nail it in the sense that's of the show say. where you exactly it up. the whole yeah. point of the show is that they didn't actually nail it. So like, ooh. So category is three, three, three and one. Or something to yeah. that effect. Three, three, three looks in one. Well, I was trying to think about it. Did anybody slay all three? I think Blair did the best job. Really? In terms of physically, there was, so for me, I felt like this runway struggled. It was either like, either you struggle with it in terms of like the mechanics of the reveal. Or you struggle yep. in terms of, well, that's not really three different looks. Well, I struggled with, there was nobody, I'm trying to think, there was nobody on the runway 
that I loved all three of the looks, except maybe Mariah. And Shay for me. I didn't like Shay's skirt. That fabric was- Fair. So it was like, I'd be like, yes, oh no. Right. Yes, um, or, or whatever, there was never like a, uh, yes, what, bitch, ah, fair. you know. So anyway, first down the runway, Blair St. Clair, and this, uh, these were all cute to me. They, none of them fit. So right. um, there was that. She, so she comes out, her first look is this pink 1950s. She needed like a petticoat or something. It wasn't, I don't know. I thought her concept of like the decades was very clever. If we could pick some new decades, uh -huh. you know, if I don't have to see uh, one more 70s jumpsuit ever. Well, sure. I'd be into it. Yes. It kind of just looked like she was wearing, you know, like her mom's dress. Like it didn't, like you could tell. Oh, there's a reveal. Whatever, but you could tell that it was like, and then I'm going to take this top layer off to reveal then another sort of uh, yellow window painty kind of mod yeah. dress. Maybe she needed like go-go boots or something. Ooh. Takes her wig off and hat to then reveal this bronze 70s jumpsuit thing. I thought the three different looks worked well. I didn't love any of these looks. Sure, I wasn't like, gagged by any of them. They were all cute. They were all yeah. cute. So then next was Mayhem Miller. And I, this, okay, so now this is one of the ones where I felt like, ooh, is that really three distinct looks or is she just taking off clothing? Yes. I liked where this ended up. Sure. I thought the fabric was beautiful. Yes. I really liked that vintage pink, black roses thing. To me, it's just unfair when they're going to judge, like Mariah, well, all you did was take off a coat. That's exactly what Mayhem did. It just bothers me. And then the third look I really liked, she takes off the wig to reveal, you know, a matching yes. little like turban oh. bathing cap yes. with the wig. Ooh, and she's like, ooh, I'm Dorothy Dandridge. You can't handle this. And I was like, L yeah. Like, yeah. When it, where it ended up, I was into it. When I think that's very smart, too, that you have to make sure that the last look is fire because that's the one you're going to be fucking standing in front of them on. Then next on the runway is Alexis Mateo. And she comes out in this circus tent robe. <laughs> <laughs> it somehow looked slightly medieval, like like a medieval carnival like because she had the the pointed hat you know how like when you draw like princesses mm -hmm. ma maybe you didn't do this <laughs> when you you know when you like draw princesses as a, as a child they have that pointed hat with then like the little uh, yes the little scarf on the end yeah of it. yeah like it was somehow it was giving me like you know oh and then robin hood's gonna come and you know <laughs> it was very robin hood win the archery contest yes somehow yes i get that vibe and then she takes that off to reveal this lime green now this didn't read ballerina to me. It read like prom y to me. Okay. I could just... she have had more of a tutu or something that then she, you know, there could have been a little- If she had like a, could have been a, a unicycle more. that she was on or like a, like a, a big oh, ball, gosh. right? You know, it was like, ooh, oh. that would have been really fabulous. Woo! <laughs> Woo! And then she takes this off to reveal, now I love the the painted on curls and the wig change yep. and, and she's in like a little acrobatic trapeze. It was a, a bodysuit, but it was so well done yeah. and really beautiful looking and like the lot, everything was really, really pretty. I was I was pretty into this. I was pretty into this. I thought this one and the first look were were very good. The middle look yeah. was like, you know, if you had showed me that one on its own, I would not be like, oh yeah, that's a circus theme, you know? But Right. Overall, I wasn't mad at it. I wasn't like, oh, I completely lost the theme. I have no idea what she's doing anymore. You know, it was like, okay, sure. That one just wasn't as successful as the others. Nobody surprised me. No, no one like pulled a Katya and like completely, I didn't like fall off my chair for anybody's reveal no. this week. And all the reveals were very, and then I slowly took off this layer, I'm getting undressed on the runway. Nobody was like, bam, right. you know, here I am. Right. And it's like when you see some of these clips from Drag Race Thailand and stuff, you're like, well, come on. I feel like maybe we need to step up the game. I was kind of wishing that Alexis would have like another horse, like, you know, carousel horse look, but alas, no such <sighs> luck. If she had found a way to ride a little carousel pony, I would love that. I mean, if she had done like it. her carousel look, right, under the, like, under this huge ass fucking. Under the big top. Yeah, yeah. And then it was like, ooh, big top, what's under there? A fucking horse. 
And then she takes off the, you know, then it's like, oh, it falls apart, you know, falls away. And now here she is in her little and now dating suit dress. Here she is on a unicycle. I mean, I would die. Oh boy. So then next was India Farah. And I, I'm sorry, I don't think this counts at all. As three looks. This is the fav- my favorite thing that she's worn. <laughs> sure. I also don't think this necessarily counts. I mean, it's just, she's wearing exactly the same fabric and she just peels off pieces of fabric. Now, did she peel off six pieces of fabric? Yes, she did. Does that make it a different look? No, it's just a slightly si- different silhouette at the end. And that doesn't count for me. I don't know what the category is. Is the category serve me three completely separate looks or is the category... I was out all day and you, you need to have a, you know, a dress for every occasion. Oh, I'm at brunch in the turn of the century and I'm wearing this houndstooth, you know, I'm a suffragette outfit situation. Oh, and then now I'm a, I'm a boss lady. I'm wearing pants, 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 pants. And then now I'm performing at some sort of striptease situation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I did like the last look was kind of fun and neat and I liked it. This was my, honestly, this was my favorite thing that she has worn. I was like, okay, yeah, this brown and black houndstooth. You know, there was the details were there. It wasn't super crapped up. It could have been. I was like, what a great outfit for you to go out on India. Like, good job. So then next down the runway is Jujubee in this okay i was a little confused i'll be honest so she comes out as you know a witchy witch yeah. for trick or treat mm-hmm. oh it was it was kind of giving me like evie's witch look remember except like not as interesting sure oh i'm doing halloween okay girl yeah then i love that every single time she walked all, all the, the way, way back, back. <laughs> all the way back now she's santa baby girl in this phyllis diller wig was not good. And, um, you know, oh, cute. She's yeah. got a little Santa outfit on. So then I was like, oh, so naturally she'll be dressed for New Year's? <laughs> That's my thought. And then it just goes, skips to Easter. <laughs> and Easter. <laughs> I did, I did love that she was like, I mean, I do love Thanksgiving. I really love Thanksgiving, but I was not going to come in dressed like a pilgrim because of cultural appropriation. But I am not coming down here trying to culturally appropriate and piss off those pilgrims. (laughs) (laughs) Really, really. That sold it for me even more, like her whole vibe. Because I didn't, I wasn't like gagged over this. But it was fun. It was a concept. She was snatched, bitch. Yes. And her little carrots, so, you know, it was it was cute and silly. I agree yeah. it was nothing groundbreaking, but it was not a bottom look by any means. Like, I had fun with it. No. So then next is Mariah Successful, Mariah Paris, Mariah Balenciaga. And I thought, oh my God, she comes out. And I was just like, yes to this dead mouse fabulosity. Like, whatever is going like, on, this big furry coat. This like Thor daft punk Oh yeah, Daft Punk, not Dead Mouse. No, very Tron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the shrug and the whole thing, for me, this was more of a lurk than you know Mayhem's first. I'm not trying to necessarily just like compare and break it down, but like for me, the accessories, the attitude, the the whole vibe was a different look. Yep. And when she's explaining it, oh, this is, I'm going to Suzanne Barch's party. And then the next one, I'm going out to drinks with my husband, you know, and the legs. <gasps> oh, this velvet, velvet second dress. I mean, Naomi Campbell walked the runway. <laughs> and then I actually thought this was the best reveal when she just flunk, yeah. tears it down and it's a gown. Oh, and the silver bodice. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So that, this, for me, was the only time I liked all three looks. Wow. So the next down the runway, Miss Cracker, is this Fabergé egg. Like, like, it was so dumb. Yes. Like, it looked so stupid. I kind of loved it. Yeah. It was like Fabergé Humpty Dumpty. I love how long she kept it on. I really appreciated well, yeah, it. She made it a real look. That's what I really appreciated was that when you have a shell device like this, 
sure, maybe it counts, but like she made it really like, oh no, I'm gonna fucking walk the runway, give you a little silly like you know thing, and sell this as a look. And it was comedic and fun. And I was like, yes, bitch, work. And then it was like, ha ha. Right, then she flopped it all down like uh, Alyssa's camera dress. And I liked this. It was a little heavy. It was a little kerplunk. But it was it was like, okay, yeah, this is cute. And the, ooh, the red hair and like, okay, this is what's going on. Yeah. But then the third look, I wasn't into the third look. This, yeah. She takes off the huge heavy skirt and she's got like one piece of tool like beige not enough to count you know it was just like and then there's that it was like that piece of tool that alexis had to like oh fuck quickly throw off her bo- her, her bustier <laughs> Whoa. with like these garters and the the big still the big poofy blue sleeves she's like oh i'm doing anastasia i didn't get when anastasia became like a can-can dancer <laughs> I was just a little, maybe that's what happened. We don't know. It's a mystery. But for me, I, I liked it started and then it gradually got less exciting for me. Yeah, I agree. So then last on the runway, Shea Coulee. Oh my God. This makeup, this I, moth, this, you know, it's like a cocoon. I dropped the cocoon and a butterfly is coming out. This like club kid, moth, day glow. Yeah. It was so, um, yeah. <laughs> I just was like, oh, it came, turned the corner. I said, what is this? Yeah, exactly. It was like, I don't know if I love it, but I'm so impacted by it. And then yeah. the more I looked at it, I was like, holy fuck, this is so amazing. I was really into this. I was really into it. I do agree. The skirt in the second look, the fabric seemed kind of cheap. I guess. It didn't read particularly well on the runway, but then when she took the, the skirt off and this jumpsuit, oh, oh fucking the, wing, the, the winged harness. What the fuck? Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, the wings, I would have preferred, instead of like the kind of streamerness of it, I would have preferred right. like a sheer fabric, you know, more of like a butterfly sure. vibe, but because it's a moth, I don't know. But I, I still was very impressed. I didn't necessarily love the wig with it. I didn't mind the crazy shape because I was like, what's this? Yeah. This is some like Marie Antoinette nonsense situation. Like, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, but maybe if the wig had been pink or yellow or I was just a little bit like, what is this? Yes. That was my only real. I understand that. But I also was like, what is this? But I kind of like it. I like the shape. I was not mad at it. Right. But I was like, huh. Hmm. Huh. I will say, I don't know why or how. But for some reason, the makeup, hair, whatever, was giving me Jane Fonda vibes. I don't know. You're going to have to pull that thumbnail. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, this was just uh, very cool. Yeah. And weird. Yeah. And whoa. Yeah. Out of the box, different, unique creative so we get to the judging and it's weird yep rupaul rupaul is like my favorite sweet of the night is the 24 karat gold sweet what was it called i don't fucking know (laughs) i mean honestly the only reaction was what 24 karat gold what what i thought that their performance was the most one note so i was confused i was fully confused Um, and and they were too they were like, bitch, what are you talking about? Are you for real? <laughs> bitch, are you for real? It's literally, I think you she are said, is this real? fucking with us. <laughs> no, not really. Huh? I... And then they're so excited. And then, but the best performance is from a different team. Oh, okay. Juju B, you are the winner. <laughs> <laughs> I... This is what I don't understand. If her favorite suite is the gold room, that means she was judging it based on the design, right? Right, but the design but was bad. the winner, regardless, you know, she thought it was great. It's gold, it's rich, I love it. Opalins, regardless of that. So she judged them based on their design is, is what I'm understanding. But Jujube was the best performance and that's who wins. So we're judging that on performance and everyone else that's in the bottom, we're also judging on performance and not the design of the room really at all because they never asked them like oh 
who picked that out or who decided this? None of it. We don't like you. That was most of the judging was, I don't really particularly like you. It was weird. And this was crafty. Now, the thing, the thing that drove me, this was the, the most insane thing to me. Juju P, Blair and Mayhem, you may leave the stage. Go to the back. Juju, you now have to decide who goes home without hearing any critiques at all. And, I, and I, they didn't see the three looks. They saw the look that they walked out in and the look that they came back in, but they didn't see how well they transformed or what the middle look was. I'm like, what is this insanity? How are they supposed to vote? They all should have been watching. At yeah. least on a monitor in the fucking back. I just couldn't fathom that she had to now make this decision with no information. But also that they all had to. Like, well, all the safe queens, sure. But like, Juju has the ultimate power. It just seemed crazy. I don't know. No, I agree. So then they're judging. Usually we don't talk about this, but we have to this week because it was nerds. I mean, obviously I'm wearing the shirt for a reason. It's, it's new and it's available at moviebitches.threadless.com. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. But yeah, the judging was so bizarre. They go to India. And the three looks were all very, very different, but they were related. They looked like they came from the same planet. <laughs> they were the same happening? fabric. They were the same fabric. What are we talking about? Were they supposed to be from different planets? What are we talking about? What happened? Maybe if he said from the same collection. Sure. I don't know. If, if this was like a Project Runway collection and it was just three different looks that were all the same fabric, but with a different hemline, I think they would get red to fill. Yeah, we found out how that worked out when that... Oh, you don't watch it. Not anymore. This guy won... He, he won, like, 75% of the season. Like, he just... They were like, you're the winner, you're the winner, you're the winner. So, like, going into the finale, it was like, oh, he's definitely gonna... And then he picked everything to be in the same flamingo fabric. Lost. <laughs> they were like... And, they, and you could tell that they were like, fuck, we really want to give it to you, but you fucked this up royally. Oh, no! And then they get to the Golden Gals girls and they, oh my God, they decided that they were only going to critique them on their Golden Girls choices. Yep. They had to leave in the footage of Michelle saying, I'm a huge Golden Girls fan. I know that Rue's a huge Golden Girls fan. I know that Ross is a huge Golden Girls. And I was like, what are we doing? This is like Angina all over again. One for Angina, two for Angina. Angina. <laughs> Angina. 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 We get it. Angina. 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 We, we didn't have time to show the walkthrough in the workroom, though. We did not have the time. We had to spend five minutes fucking Angina, Angina, Angina. But no, yeah, okay, great, thanks. And then we get to Miss Cracker, and she's, you know, they're like, oh, we really liked this. And she's like, oh, thank God, oh my God. <laughs> and and she starts to talk about, now I'm surprised that this didn't come up in Untucked. She's like, I'm having a really hard time connecting with people. I know that Alexis will know what I am talking about when I can't connect with people. And I was like, oh, bitch, Alexis is going to be pissed and be like, you're trying to throw me under the bus. Ah. Yeah. But it didn't come up. No. But Nicole Byer did give her a fabulous pep talk, and I was very much here for it. Uh. Fuck that. Who cares? Don't listen to anybody. You're you. You're fabulous. Be you. Who cares about what anybody else is saying? It, I mean, she... Fuck that. Who cares? Fuck them. Yeah. Do you. Be yourself. What are you talking about? And then they go all in on Mariah, and they're like, girl, you just took off a coat. We're not into it. We don't... I, I was mad. Michelle's critique about my runway look is bullshit with a bow wrapped around it, because I don't do any half on anything. Particularly when you go back and look and it was like, but literally Mayhem's was more of just a jacket and then no jacket than Mariah's was. But yeah, they decided they hated her as well. They, they gaslighted, she got Monique carded. She by the really way. did. I, Worse. I mean. I think she should have, honestly, I think she should have won the first episode. Almost. Top. And top. she shouldn't have been in the bottom. She shouldn't have been in the bottom both of these weeks. I agree. I agree. I'm mad. I miss her already. I know. She was pissed too. Hi. My love. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? Delicious. What would be really fun to me, and I don't know if they'll do it or not, but I think it would be fun, instead of last year's Lala Perusa, I think it would be fun if they had to lip sync against the lip sync assassin that sent them home. 
That'd be fun. And like a Mariah yeah. Monet lip sync. That'd be fun. Here for it. I'm not mad at that. Yeah. Yeah, because then we get to see Evie lip sync again and I'm here for it. Yes. And then we get to Shay and this was so... They were really dismissive. Yeah. Remember when Ross was talking to Alexis and he was like... Was this like a circus theme? Yes. Okay, well, particularly the middle outfit, I just thought didn't work in between the two. Like they were ready to hate them already. It was really weird to me. It was really weird and also I was like... Ross, what the fuck are you talking about? It was very obvious that this was a circus theme. So we get to Shay, and I was expecting them to be like, girl, you completely fell away in this challenge, but this look, holy fucking shit, you came out of a chrysalis. Oh my God, look at this freaking moth goddess in front of us. Yeah, yeah. And instead, no. literally, I watched it back, literally the only critique of her fashion is Ross saying, I love how colorful it is. I love how bright it is, but it is a little crafty. It could be uh, a little refined. That was it. No one else said anything. At least they didn't show it. I don't know how you could not have a reaction to this outfit as holy shit. Well, also, I mean, there's been stuff going around on the internet. I'm sure we're, we've done this before too, but I do think that crafty has taken on the wrong meaning. Crafty to me should mean, oh, you really found a way to pull all these things together and make what you could with what you had. Sure. Not, this looks cheap and bad. Right. Either way, either definition of crafty, this wasn't it. Nope. They didn't even mention her makeup. And something we have never seen from Shay. Like, this is so beyond her box. Right. I mean, Obviously she can do anything, she's fabulous. But like, we haven't seen this kind of dramatic makeup from her before. Not even a mention? Well, and then of course the stupid nonsense too of, oh, well, the Golden Girls, you mix Sophia with, with Dorothy and no one would ever, she would never say that. And that's sac, what the fuck? fuck sh shut up, Ross. Like, honestly, what are we talking about? What, what, there's not like a skit that they were doing. Like, it's a joke. It's a Golden Girls joke. Uh, This was absurd. I just couldn't figure out why they decided to edit the critique in a way where they only talked about how they misrepresented the Golden Girls and did not actually critique them in any way. In any way. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, that happened. And then they all go back. And Alexis is smart. She was really casually coming for Shay. Literally, they said that it was a room full of three old ladies. But honestly, she got the worst critiques. Well, Shay definitely got the worst critique. The judges definitely had the most bad things to say about Shay. Since all of you weren't up there, I'm going to keep saying Shay's name in a negative light. And I was like, you know what you're doing. I mean, she wasn't wrong I'm either. They came in for Shay for unknown reasons. But for unknown reasons, yes. <laughs> but she was like, I'm definitely going to just mention this because I have a plan, you know. Yeah. I wasn't mad at it. I was just like, I see what you're doing. So they all sit around and right. talk for a while. It wasn't particularly engaging. Yeah, you know, they have to all talk to Jujube, the bottom three. It's India, Mayhem, or I'm sorry, oops. It's <laughs> Freudian, Freudian Slip. slip. Oh, the fracking? No, no, not that. Oh. <laughs> Fracky and slip? Oh, I like that a lot. And then, oh my God, in the best part of this entire episode ever, uh, everything, oh my God, Juju, well, she changes into this you know, I'm wearing a leopard cat suit. She looked gorgeous, loved it. Drama, 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 lipstick, ah, dramatic. What am I thinking about? What's going through my mind right now is, oh, I miss my cats. <laughs> <laughs> because I feed them. They don't judge me. They do, but they have to live with me. I feed them. I also scoop their poops. <laughs> She's not playing the producer's game. Right? No. Meow, meow, bitches. Meow, meow, oh bitches. My God. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? So what do you think is going on downstairs? Meow, meow, meow. 
I mean, my my head exploded. I, I, oh. Meow, meow, bitch. <laughs> I die. I felt like she was literally speaking through the screen to us. Meow, meow, movie bitches. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking love her. Love her. <laughs> meow, meow, bitches. It was just so fun and silly. Yeah, yeah. Meow, meow, bitches. So, quick commercial break, and we will be back with the lip sync assassin and untucked and some things. It's choices. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. Your forlorn face. <laughs> <laughs> we find out that the lip sync assassin is Monet Exchange. Yeah. Did you see Lee Dawson's tweet about that? It was just like, and now the secret lip sync assassin is someone else from the Work the World tour. It's not untrue. They've already got them on the payroll. Exactly. They got that direct deposit set up. <laughs> yeah, it's Monet Exchange. And I was like, ooh, this is going to be a good lip sync. Didn't love this look. No. Didn't love it. I like the boots. I live for the pop. I like the boots. But yeah, I just I did this like orange velvety bodysuit. I just wasn't obsessed with it. And no. the wig, it, it also didn't give me a lot of like, oh, where... Where is she going to take off her rainbow pants to reveal then paisley jodhpurs that then reveal, like, it wasn't like, oh, she's going to, she's got something up those sleeves. No. It was just like, oh, she's going to dance the house down. Cool. Okay. Yeah. She didn't pull out all the stops. She just did a good job. So they have to lip sync to Juice by Lizzo. God damn, this song is catchy. Yes. Although not a great lip sync song. It's not a great lip sync song. It's, it's very poppy, fluffy, repetitive. Do I think... Potentially someone could do something great with it. Sure. Um, if Evie was dressed like her fucking orange clown and she was juicing something. Or if Nina Bonina yeah, Brown maybe. was there as an orange. <gasps> Love that. But yeah. I still don't think it's like a great lip sync song. No, because it's just so repetitive. It's a seven line chorus, Valentina. <laughs> you had to bring a lot of energy to this, I think, and keep it going. There's no like rise and fall. There's no storytelling. And especially with Juju B, she's yeah. always best when it's like a fucking ballad, right? And this was just like, yeah. ooh, I'm having fun. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and we'll talk about the elephant in the room, which is she did not know the words. They just say I'm not the baddest bitch you lie. At first, she did. Right. And then it, it... It started to slip out. Really? She started to do the, I'm going to dance with my back to the judges. I don't know the lyrics. Here's my ass. <laughs> now... Monet did a great job. Yes. She definitely won. Yes. Did she dance the house down boots? I need a new foundation. My basement is flooded. No. No. Like, I don't remember specifically, like, that thing that she did. No. Oh, shit. No. It was cute. Like, I was like, that was cute. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. The song is cute. Like, I don't know. Monet wins and reveals that the person that everyone voted to go home was Mariah. Mariah. Fuck! Oh, no. Man. This is a bunch of crap. No. I'm terribly sad that Mariah has gone home. Yeah. I, I love that she... Where's my fanny pack? I'm getting out of here. <laughs> oh! I'm pissed. You know what? Where's my fanny pack. I'm leaving. <laughs> I really love her. I'm genuinely going to miss her. Yeah. I'm mad. I don't think it was fair. Um, all of the above. Yeah. The judging was whack a dack. And I'm pissed that we lost Angina and now Mariah in the first three episodes that I, I disagree. I know. But anyway, this week on Untucked, it was sad and emotional. Yes. And important. Yes. I thought it was a very helpful conversation. And yeah. for me, it didn't feel as put upon and produced oh, as no. like the it tragedy very... mirrors can tend to do. No. This was like a game. real moment. I just, you know, I just want to use, of course, <laughs> and drink. And I know that I shouldn't. One is too many and a thousand's <laughs> never enough. So Jujubee is basically like just so overwhelmed and excited that she has finally won a challenge. And oh my gosh. And she brings up, this is the first time she's been back on the show and been sober. And right. how she's really proud of that and really, you know, like in a good place with herself and all of the above. And then Blair talks about how she 
is also sober and how it's really hard because when you work in bars, you know, all the time, you know, it seems like a prerequisite that you would drink. And then Mayhem has like a revelation. Sometimes I feel <laughs> that I have a problem and that I need to address it sometimes. And I thought that was like a really interesting and valid conversation. And then Juju gave a really lovely response back saying, you know, it's your path, it's your yeah. journey, yep. it's your time frame. The most important thing to know about your path is it's yours. Yeah. And you are in charge. It's on nobody else's time but yours. But yeah, Mariah is packing up and then we get this video message from Bianca Del Rio. I know it was your goal to win the competition, but it just didn't seem to work out this time. This was just so weird to me because it was so obvious to me that they didn't have the asset ready and they were just like, and now react to a message from someone. It was very- Oh, from Mariah. Well, it also felt like Bianca was like, I don't know where you placed if you're pissed or if you made it a good portion of the way through, I love you regardless, girl. You did great. You're a winner to me. You know, it was like <laughs> that's vague. That's everything, Keep it vague. Everything was so vague. The reaction was, oh, someone is talking. I, they didn't know that it was Bianca Del Rio yet. Look at that green yet. screen. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, my sister Bianca Del Rio, the queen of queens. But then I love that she kept her makeup on. Yes. Mm, yes. And then gives that fabulous speech. Ballroom culture, gay culture is not a trend. Appreciate it. So cheers to Mariah. Yeah. I'm gonna miss her. I genuinely think this is some shenanigans and I'm I'm not over it. No. I didn't think they would fuck up the season this early. This early, right? I was just like, oh, it's episode three. It was, it was obvious, I thought, of like the projection of where everyone netted out, you know? Like, let's just be real about it. <laughs> like, maybe there's a surprise here and there. Like, oh shit, she really turned it out. But like, we all know where the, the deck was supposed to fall. At least I thought. Agreed. At least I thought. Yeah. Well, cheers to Mariah, and also cheers to fucking Jujubee. Love that bitch. <gasps> meow, meow, bitches. <laughs> meow, meow, bitches. <laughs> meow, meow, bitches.